welcome to another day of Ether Raids. We're taking on a Japanese player here. This one's going to be a quick, well, hopefully quick, uh, hit and run or hit and just blow everything up because uh, this team is boxed in, so it shouldn't be too much of a threat. Um, there is a little bit of a uh, warp uh, potential here from the enemy team uh, with uh, guidance, but mm, as long as I... Uh, <laughs> As long as I plan around it, we should be fine. Um, so let's let's just let this one play out. It shouldn't be anything too serious to contend with. That aside, um, I'm looking at this legendary Nana here, and my god, has she fallen off in terms of just damage output. Um, it's kind of unfortunate because she neutralizes so many things that are actually really strong in the game, and I'm actually like wondering if she will be Shall the only proceed? one to have this effect where she just completely ignores dr it would be pretty clutch if they put that on another unit although if that unit was in the regular pool i'm pretty sure there would be high demand on that unit as well as the fact that if that unit were to have or that unit is going to have modern goal. stats so it's going to be a really really strong unit um yeah. plus the desperation that she has if she's doubling Typically, she kills most things, or she used to, um, before being able to get hit. She kind of is like, like the unit that I think is most similar to her now uh, is T Time Ira. The problem is, you, you're not giving up Supreme Heaven for anything. Um, you could probably run her Supreme Heaven with the Leer uh, just to get the DR piercing, and I think that's a pretty decent combination uh, to kind of mimic what Legendary Nana does, but. My god, has Nana fallen off in terms of um, combat potential? Hmm. I keep, like, when is her refine? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm imagining that she's going to be an absolute menace when her refine comes out. Um, a lot of potential in this Nana unit here. She has a, a lot of room to go really high, depending on not only, like, what refine and remix they give her, but also skill potential in terms of inheritance there's so much that you can give her to make her a lot better than she currently is right now her biggest problem is that if she's not killing she's dead pretty much she has no way to protect herself which was, which was one of my complaints about her at the time she's basically made a paper she's like uh salika <laughs> emblem salika but like she doesn't do uh range combat she's melee um but i really really like her um and i was planning to like even try to consider like i probably should get this thought out of my head of, of plus 10 legendary units because it's pretty much impossible at this point for me i think like in terms of recent units i've only gotten i can't think of any that i've gotten recently that are even close i don't think i have a legendary unit that's close to plus five um, out of the recent bashes, like I'm talking from uh, uh, Legendary Nana onwards, um, the last plus 10 that I had was, or the most recent one is uh, the Violet, female Violet, um, which is unfortunate because I do actually like quite a few of them. It's just so hard to pull on those Legendary Mythic banners. Um, the return, the return to reward is good in terms of there's so many things that you can get, but if you're aiming for something specific, it's kind of hard. It makes it not worth it. In a lot of the times. Um, so shout so. out to a Hero Rises for making the violet possible, possible at the time. Uh, male violet at least possible. So I have two score bots uh, in the arena. I'd love to get another one, but I, I just don't see it happening. And uh, I could have gone for female Alir, but she, like even at the time of, of a Hero Rises, she was already falling off. So I decided not to to swing that direction. And I also don't like the fact that she has to be or she has a it her she needs to be nearby the um her allies to get them the most out of her weapons i kind of like units that play more of a solo gameplay style um either one one space that's usually fine but for her she kind of needs more people clumped together and it means that you probably have to run like an armored unit to keep the units behind her safe um, just thoughts. I, I don't really like the way how she plays. Um, but she is very, very strong. Even this male Alir, he also has, like you see that I can't kill him now, but that's because he has three allies within three spaces. But I don't like that. Um, I wish he got that effect with less uh, conditions associated to it. It's good that there, there are conditions because it means that I will be able to kill him at some point. 
after I take out one of these other units. But the condition is 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 a bit much in terms of like just for regular play. I wouldn't necessarily want to run this um, male alir. Um, but yeah, that aside, um, Nana is gonna get a crack with fine. I'm pretty sure of it. So if anyone has her, like I'm sure a bunch of people have her at plus ten. Uh, they're going to be in for a good treat. I think she should run pretty good with Attack Speed XL, which I've decided to get another copy of um, because reasons. Um, so I'm going to try to do that. And then, I don't know. I'm kind of not sure what to do from there. This week has been pretty easy so far for Aether Raids in terms of offense. It typically is, most cases. Uh, defense is kind of whatever. Probably not going to do the defense replays this week again because there's nothing there to really show off. Um, yeah, it's just a rerun of one of the defenses that I've already used. Um, so uh, there's really nothing there. Um, and I'm, again, I'm still stale mated with the Ike thing that I was talking about before. I don't know if I'll do it for the next two setups. The next two. Well. Well, Astra Season coming up, I don't think I'll do it again there either because, um, let me hit this button real quick so that I accidentally lose. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I'll do it for Astra Adama Season coming up because, um, I don't really know what to do for defense for Astra Adama Season at this point, aside from the fact that Furrier's bonus, I guess, is really nice, but... I don't know what to do, man. <laughs> I need new units. I need new range of units that can handle the problem that I'm currently facing with that. Uh, either that, or I'm going to have to upgrade some of my units that I have on defense, and I don't really want to spend the fodder right now. All right, welcome to a another match of Ether Razor here. Another day, we're taking on a Japanese player here. We're going to go with the uh, Edelgard team here. This should be pretty straightforward again. Um, I, I'm like uber impressed the fact that I can still use this team at this point in the game. Uh, this has been, I think I've been using this since like February of this team and it has not fallen off completely yet. I think the time, the moment that I'll stop using this is the moment when both of these Edelgards are no longer able to kill things. Um, but for now, it's it's still like it full blaze all the way in. We can still do it. Um, Goldvig here is a really great addition to this team. Um, I think it'll be kind of difficult to replace her after her bonus season is up. Um, as well as, well, Ash isn't necessarily needed here. Hmm. Leave it okay. to me. All right, but. That aside, I'm gonna set this up and then, you know, go in and take stuff out. I'm kinda concerned about how do I who do I lock out, but I'll I think I'll figure it out as I go in. Um and then then we should be good. Um that aside, summoner duels, I'm recording this after I've played my SDS matches, or really just the rendered <laughs> I threw pretty much. Prim primarily because um the first match was a gatekeeper. I didn't practice much with any of the teams like I, I made one team specifically but that team ended up getting banned like literally every time it was a team with uh um Uller. what am i saying Uller? i mean ursula and uh a couple other units that were would have been fun to to use it was a uh, cav line team with kid and lynn so it would have been pretty fun but um get, it got banned like pretty much every time and I was left with uh, my Catcher Ball and my Cordelia Ball. And I had no interest in using either of those teams, primarily because... Uh, pains to say this, but Catcher has, like, at this point, completely fallen off. Like, the, the, the one thing that was really, like, her saving grace was the, the Triangle Attack. But there's so many units in the game that have that... Um, right, you are. Reduce damage by X percent for brave hits in their weapon claws. Most of the Omni tanks nowadays have that, so it kind of like makes it difficult. Let's although it is swim. pierceable DR, but it makes it difficult for me to peer nukes Good with Catria because a lot of teams that you're facing nowadays in in uh, hmm. summoner duels, SDS and SDR are more reliant on Omni tanks than actual nukes. Um, so they're... Back in the day, 
catcher could actually live a hit? Oh, this is bad. Hmm. Alright, I'll figure that out. But that's actually bad against Medius there. Hmm. Alright, what do I do? I will deliver. Hmm. Yeah, well, anyways, back in the day, Catcher used to be Let's able to live a hit against most melee units. Um, one, she wouldn't get outsped. Two, she had enough bulk to survive a hit from most melee threats. It wasn't until like Brave, Seleph, that she just started to, to get absolutely obl obliterated with the, the Cav Rush meta. The problem is, there are so many Omni Tanks now in the game that she just doesn't live anything. And even like units with their refines, uh, thinking in particular to Mythic Dagger, she's able to pretty much one shot uh, catch her or outspeed her. Um, and she pretty much just dies. I'm trying to figure out the best build for Katria to make her competitive again. Uh, I don't know if I should probably like swap out her specials to run like, I don't know, a Scushin or something so that she can start living a hit. Um, but then if it's pointless to have her live a hit if she can't kill in retaliation. So there's a drawback there. Maybe I should try to get her to run something like a... Uh, no quarter so that she gets a guaranteed kill if she's able to counter attack because of like let's say guard bearing four which i do have on her but her speed is really kind of like fall off <laughs> at this stage she really really needs her refine <laughs> to try to keep up uh the speed creep is crazy but i don't know i've been thinking of giving her like attack speed excel but i don't know if it really matters if she's getting out sped so, she has sh so that she has like multiple layers of damage reduction. Uh, I'm not too concerned about her fighting things at two range because I usually I have a far save like Mur or something on the team to compensate for that. But if I can't get her to survive these melee combats or to be a, a more competent melee frontline unit, there's no point in me using the catchable team because I'm down to like two nukes Let's and you really swim. want to be running like three nukes on you your luck. catcher ball and have catria kind of act as a frontline shield as well <laughs> to make it kind of actually work um, I'll study your you, you really need someone who can do control uh you really need a flyer uh, i don't know who that flyer is going to be but you really luck. need a flyer and um, you need one other unit Three nukes. One of the new. You have Catria, Far Save, Canto Control, a Flyer, and then one of the new. Uh, because of the amount of Omni Tanks, I've been putting Ike in that last roll, and it's been pretty inconsistent, man. Ike has been dying sometimes, and then not even that. You can kill everyone around Ike. He doesn't have the best player phase. So he fails to kill a lot of things sometimes, and it can kind of cost you the game if he's not doubling, and he does sometimes needs to double to kill things. So I really don't know what to do with my catcher ball <laughs> for for SDS, and I, I really want to because he's such it's such a powerful playstyle that I just don't want to drop it, you know. But it really all revolves around the fact that I need Catcher to start offering more than just the triangle attack. I need her to survive yeah. or kill things. And I haven't figured out what to do yet, but that's something that I got on the back burner. We're going to play one more match. GG's. Here we go. All right, here's the second match of the day. We're taking on a Japanese player, and we're going to use this team here. I just realized that I didn't have the... Um, Celica Ring on Govig on this team. I actually needed that. That's a failure on my part, but I can probably still make it work. Uh, you know, I was thinking like just recently how we have these rings now, and in particular in regards to armored units uh, and the armored specials. I'm referring to armored bacon, and <laughs> it's not actually armored bacon, but yeah, armored bacon, uh, armored blaze. I'm thinking in, in regards to those, you don't actually need to run Armored Flow or Armored Beacon um, because you get the Ike Ring that gives you that unpierceable DR. So you don't actually need to run them. 
I guess it kind of does maybe stack a little bit, but you could just as easily run side. Armored Blades, which I think is a superior special at this point for armored units, because it gives you that non-pierceable DR from melee range, which is a big deal. Like, let's think Shall about like proceed? Mer, for instance. A lot of her matchups, she loses to Winter Edelgard a lot of the times, and that's how I get in, because I can take her out at melee range. But if you gave her Armored Blades, it would be a little bit more difficult for me to win for Winter Edelgard to win that interaction. Um, same thing with Byleth. Mm. Well, Byleth has the perf special, so probably no. Byleth, Byleth is probably the best example because he fun functions so well with um, the combination of um, Icring plus Supreme Heaven. It makes him a lot more difficult to take out uh, because he has the dual unpierceable DRs. Uh, that is something that's needed for every melee unit at this point. <laughs> uh, infantry included, not just armors. And I think Clearing them providing the it to armored units was a way to slowly introduce that to the game, just to see how we would cope with that type of special being accessible in the pool and how uh, we'd be able to you know, take on units we as a result aligned. of that. They've put it at the Icring because range units are so much more powerful and so much more prevalent in every game mode, as opposed to melee, which is now something that's becoming more common because of the Celica ring, because Celica allows you to warp. And that's a big deal for melee because that was their biggest drawback. So I think now would be the time for us to start getting something like a, a, an Ike ring, or maybe Roy would be the one that would do it. That would give you that unpierceable DR at melee range, because that's really what a lot of our god swords are missing. Because far saves are a thing, and we can pretty much just put a far save behind a frontliner and that frontliner will perform so much better. I was, I'm, I'm saying this in, in regards to particularly uh, Katra, because that's really something that she needs in order to just be more useful in SDS, because her biggest problem is that she's just dying. She's literally just dying every time she gets hit now, because she's so far behind in the power curve, uh, her defenses are, are pretty mid. Uh, Guard Beeren is pretty much the only thing that gives her any type of uh, survivability, and it's really just not that much. Uh, I was fight. contemplating giving her uh, Wavern Flight, or Wavern Whiff, whatever it's called, just to see if it would improve her, but looking at her stats spread, she doesn't really run it very well. I mean, it's great that you're not getting double, but if she's dead on the first hit, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? She gets more out of, um, even though the DR from um, Armored Waver and Rift is, is not pierceable, she gets she still gets a bit more out of uh, Guard Bearing 4. Um, so yeah, I'm at a loss <laughs> at how to build her to, to make her just do stuff. Um, also, I'm kind of struggling in terms of peering her with the right nukes. One of the problems that I had in this SDR run was SDS run was that she, I, I couldn't kill anything. Like I was using Shez, who there's also a lot of range units that don't need catcher support to hit Brave. Um, there's more of them these days. So I was running her with Shez and it didn't really matter. Uh, Shez was hitting a lot of zeros because support SDS teams are set up nowadays so that the far save has far more support than they used to. So Shez hitting like zero against Mur was a big problem for me. <laughs> it was a really big problem for me because there was so much support that Mur had, plus the 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 eye cring and the and the blades and all of that that she wasn't able to get through uh, Mur's defenses in the first two hit. Really, what she would have needed was like desperation or something, but. There's no way to really run that in Chez's kit right. and then get past Mur's guard. There's just so much to think about because I put Canta, you need Canta control, of course, so she was kind of filling that role. So Softly it's now. just so much to think about, man. And then also, Salika really also failed against Mur a lot of the times. Ah. I don't know, man. It was just so much to think about. You really need to pair the right nukes with Katra. Uh, so far, what I've been practicing with is um, I've upgraded my... Uh, well, 
this was a long time ago, but I've upgraded my rearm son, my harmonic harmonic Sonya, the dual one, harmonic actually harmonic, uh, for the AOE uh, effects because they're from the same game, and that's another one of the problems. Binding Blades is is so underrepresented in terms of actual good units. I think you have dual Igrin, and that's pretty much it. And she's not even from Binding Blades. She's just like. You know, what are the units that are that's available because of the dual Into effect? The um, but Binding Blades has a really, really bad roster of units. Uh, I str like every time I go into my barracks and I try to find a unit from that game that's actually good. Uh, you have Ascended Fur, sure, but I don't really need her for ranged. Uh, there are like there's like no range units from that game that are actually good, and that's not good. I mean, you have Legendary Lumina, but. I want like flyers and infantries, and that yes, game doesn't have a ton of representation, which is another reason because Chatra's effect they're is right. she gives desperation and guaranteed follow up to those they're units. Either they're that or Valentia, and Valentia also doesn't have uh, the greatest amount of range nukes either. So Stop you really, now. you really gotta pair her with the, to build her and the team around her the way that I'd want the team to be built. I currently can't do that in the game without like spending a bunch of fodder to let's say upgrade someone like uh, legendary um because I think oh, if you give him a cultist strike no assassin strike he can probably do a bit more Shall damage because one of his problems was that he was starting to hit zeros hmm. um but uh, I don't know man um yeah Katra I'm really right. struggling with Katra I'll figure it out, I think, at some point, and then I'll probably start trying to push again for uh, a solid run in SDS. Uh, losing to that, that gatekeeper in the first match really just threw me, and I kind of just threw the rest of the matches and surrendered some of them, but I mean, it is what it is. We'll get there next time. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, that's it. GDs, see you in the next one.